Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na nagagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw na ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasama. Amen. A pleasant day, grade 9 students. I'm Katerina Advincola from Dalandana National High School. Welcome to PE Time with Manka. Before we start our lesson, let us be reminded of our FB live streaming etiquette. Be on time. Avoid unnecessary comments in the chat box. No hate speech. Stay focused and avoid any interruptions. Take down notes while listening or watching. And lastly, have fun and enjoy learning. Are you excited to learn class? That's great! Let me present first the most essential learning competency that you are about to learn today. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to perform appropriate first aid for injuries and emergency situations in physical activities and sports settings. Example, cramps, sprain, heat exhaustion. Before we proceed to our class discussion, let us first check your prior knowledge by answering what I know on your PE learning packet. Directions, send or comment in the chat box a smiley face if you think you can confidently do the task and sad face if you cannot. You will be given 5 seconds each item. Are you ready class? Let's start! I know the different roles of first aid. Timer starts now. Number two, I recognize the characteristics of a good first aider. Timer starts now. Number three, I understand the importance and follow the basics of first aid. Timer starts now. Send now your emoji in the comment section. Number four, I can apply the principles of first aid. Timer starts now. Number five, I can assess different common injuries that may be encountered by officials and athletes. Timer starts now. Last item, number six, I can give treatment for common injuries like sprain, strain, dislocation, fractures, and injuries. Timer starts now. Let us see what you've got. If all of your answers are smiley faces, you possess all the skills expected of you in this module and will have a little difficulty in accomplishing the task. But if all of your answers are sad faces, you possess some of the skills expected of you in this module and might have some difficulty in accomplishing the task, but willingness and enthusiasm will surely help. Good job, class! Can you guess what's inside the kit? I know you have a lot in mind. Just comment your answers in the chat box 
and I will give you 5 seconds to do that. Timer starts now. I can see all your smart answers now. Let's see if you got it right. Julius answered iodine solution. That's correct. Aryan responded cotton. Good job. Enzo replied alcohol solution. That's right. Kobe answered ghost pad. You've got it right. While Keisha commented band aid. Excellent guess. We also have triangular bandages, elastic bandages, and many more. These things are used for dressing and bandaging in the basic first aid. Let's proceed. In order to meet the demands of daily routines and activities, it is required a fitter and healthier mind and body which can be achieved through active participation in physical activities. This lesson will determine your knowledge with regards to the common injuries that may happen during sports officiating activity. This will also help you master the different basic of first aid that will help reduce the suffering of an injured person. Let's define first aid. It refers to the emergency or immediate care you should provide when a person is injured or ill until full medical treatment is available or delayed. For minor conditions, first aid care may be enough which includes self-help and home care if medical assistance is not available or delayed. For serious or extreme cases, first aid care should be continued until more advanced care becomes available. However, we must know the limits of first aid we can give because improper first aid can do more harm than good in some instances. Any person who gives first aid is called a first aider. Before we perform first aid, we need to identify first and foremost the roles of first aid. Number one, it is a bridge that fills the gap between the victim and the physician. We need to ensure to fill in or provide the necessary first aid to the victim. In that situation, we are in charge or responsible for the victim's safety while we are waiting for the rescuer to arrive. Number two, it is not intended to compete with or to take the place of the services of the physician. Again, our role here is to render first aid only to the victim. Do not take over the services of the medical team or the physician. Number three, it ends when the service of the physician begins. Our service as a first aider ends when we turn over the victim properly to the ambulance or medical personnel. Class, if you want to extend the help to the injured person, you need to set your goal first for you to perform first aid properly. The objective of first aid help us to understand our goal as a first aider. Number one, one of the objective is to alleviate suffering. We need to give first aid to the injured person to help reduce or lessen the suffering. Number two, the second objective is to prevent added or further injury or danger in order to avoid the condition from worsening and danger to the patient. We need to apply first aid properly and with gentle and care. Lastly, the third and the most important objective is to prolong life. First aid measure aims to preserve and sustain life. Also, to save the victim from imminent danger. Do you think you have the characteristics of a good first aider class? 
Let's find out and check if you possess all those characteristics. Number one, be gentle. We should not cause pain and panic to the victim. Number two, be observant. We should notice all signs of the victim's situation and the safety of surroundings while rendering first aid. Remember, safety first. Number three, be resourceful. We should make use of the best things at hand by utilizing the use of available resources in the scene. Number four, be tactful. We should not alarm the victim. As a good first aider, we must show calmness and composure in helping the patient. Number five, be sympathetic. We should be comforting by showing concern and care to the victim. I know you acquire all or some of these characteristics and be able to perform better in first aid and help save an injured person someday. For you to have a much better understanding with our lesson, let's participate and enjoy this activity number one, Spot the Principle. On your paper or notebook, just write do if you think it is the best thing to do in giving first aid and write don't if you think it is not. I'll be giving you 10 seconds to accomplish this activity. Are you ready? Let's spot the principle number one. Keep the victim covered to reduce shock. Number two. Give food and drink to an unconscious person. Number three, move the injured person. Number four, stay calm. Number five, reassure and comfort the victim. Number six, loosen any tight clothing. Your timer starts now. Let's check your answers. Number one, the answer is do. The first response to an accident is the most important. Know what to do. Keep a shock victim covered to reduce heat loss. If needed, cover the person with a blanket to prevent chilling and to keep them warm. Number two, the correct answer is don't. The risk of putting water into the mouth of an unconscious person is the risk of putting water into their lungs and drowning them. Giving food or water to an unconscious victim is in danger of choking from vomit, saliva, or blood. Number three, the correct answer is don't. Do not attempt to move a seriously injured victim unless they are in immediate danger and need to be placed in a recovery position. Other injuries may occur or worsen that you are unaware of such a fracture on the neck and backbone. Number four, the answer is do. In rendering first aid, you should manifest calmness because when you panic in front of the victim, it may send a wrong signal and lead him or her into fear or shock. Number five, the answer is do. It is normal for the victim to cry, shout, or panic because of pain and discomfort triggered by the injury. First aider should know how to calm down the victim by sympathizing with them. Reassuring with good words will bring comfort and sometimes relieve the pain. Number six, the answer is do. Injury may sometimes accompany difficulty in breathing. The first aider should loosen any tight clothing such as necktie, buttons, and belts. 
Doing this would be a great help to facilitate an injured person. I hope you answered it correctly and remember all the principles in giving first aid. Let us now proceed to sports officiating. It is the supervision of sports competitions in accordance with established rules. Managing a sports competition is not that easy, specifically on implementing the rules and keeping order in the duration of the game. Sports officials play a major role in the success of sports competitions. Thus, they are also prone to different injuries. We encountered accidents while playing and experienced some injuries. Injury is also known as a physical trauma. It is a damage to the body caused by external force. We must be aware what type of injury it is for us to handle properly and not to worsen the damage. The common injuries encountered by sports officials in their first aid are the following. Let's identify the common injuries of sports officials and athletes and analyze its symptoms. The first one is sprain. It is a stretch or tear of a ligament, the band of connective tissues that joins end of one bone with another. This injury is caused by trauma such as fall or blow to the body. Areas of the body most vulnerable to sprain are ankles, knees, and wrists. Signs of sprain include varying degrees of pain, bruises, inflammation, swelling, inability to move a limb or joint, and instability. Second is strain. It is a twist, pull, or tear of a muscle or tendon, a cord tissue connecting to muscle to bone. It results from overstretching and overcontraction. Symptoms of strains include pain, muscle spasm, and loss of strength. The knee is the largest joint in the body, one of the most easily injured. It is made up of four main things, bones, cartilage, ligaments, and tendons. It is also the most commonly injured joint because of its complex and weight-bearing capacity. Knee injury can be resolved from a blow or a twist to the knee, from improper landing after a jump, or from running too hard, too much, or without proper warm-up. Pain and swelling are the most common signs of knee injury. In addition, your knee may catch or lock up. Many injuries cause instability, the feeling that your knee is giving away. Fourth is fracture. It is a break in the bone that can occur from either quick, one-time injury to the bone or acute fracture or from repeated stress to the bone over the time or stress fracture. Symptoms of a fracture are intense pain, deformity, the limb looks out of place, swelling, bruising, or tenderness around the injury, numbness, tingling, and problems moving a limb. Fifth is dislocation. Occurs when the two bones that come together to form a joint become separated. It is common in shoulders, fingers, elbows, knees, and hips. A dislocated joint can be visibly deformed or out of place, swollen or discolored, intensely painful and immovable. Sixth is heat exhaustion, which is a severe form of heat illness. It is caused by loss of water and electrolytes through excessive sweating and overexposure to sunlight. Heat exhaustion 
happens because of overtraining or exercise. It causes the body temperature to rise. Sometimes it is accompanied with shortness of breath and chest pain. What to do if someone is experiencing heat exhaustion? Number one, move them to a cold place. Number two, lie them down with leg brace. Number three, remove any excess clothing and apply cold compress. Number four, give them water or isotonic drink. Last but not the least is wound. It is a type of injury which happens relatively quickly in which skin is torn, cut, or punctured, also known as open wound, or where blunt force trauma causes a contusion, also called closed wound. The five types of wound are very common to sports officials and athletes. Abrasion, laceration, avulsion, incision, and puncture. We must apply first aid treatment by Number one, control the bleeding by applying direct pressure and elevation on the injured part. This is intended for an open wound. Number two, put proper dressing and bandaging to prevent further contamination. Number three, immobilize the injured part. And number four, stabilize an impaled object. Are you familiar with the first aid techniques being applied to injuries during recreation? Let us be reminded of the price method and avoid harm if injury occurs. Class, the price method is a new way of administering first aid. Let us now dissect each acronym for you to understand its meaning. P stands for protection. All you need to do is to remove additional risk or danger in the injured area by using a support such as crutches or walking sticks. R stands for rest. Stop moving the injured area. Avoid exercise and reduce your physical activities. I stands for ice. Apply ice to the injured area for 20 minutes every 2 hours for 2 days. Wrap the ice pack with towel so that it doesn't directly touch your skin. C stands for compression. Apply an elastic compression bandage in the injured area during the day to reduce swelling. E is for elevation. Raise the injured area above the level of your heart whenever possible. This may also help reduce swelling. And D is for diagnosis. Acute injuries should be evaluated by healthcare professionals. While performing the basic first aid to the injured person, let somebody call the Valenzuela Alert Hotline number 8352-5000. Medical team or physicians are the one who will evaluate the victim. Another additional thing to remember and avoid during or when experiencing injury, the harm. H stands for heat. Any kind of heat will speed up the circulation, resulting in more swelling and longer recovery. So, do not take hot baths, showers, and saunas. A stands for alcohol. It can increase bleeding and swelling in the injured area, resulting in longer recovery. R is for running. Running or other forms of exercise can cause further damage to the injured part. Lastly, M is for massage, causing more swelling and bleeding into the tissue, which can delay the recovery time. 
Do you want to find out if you are a good first aider? Let's see. Analyze and choose the situations and comment the letters of your answer in the chat box. You will be given 10 seconds to do that. Are you ready? Let's start. Student A is very relaxed in controlling the bleeding on her classmate's finger. Student B is insisting that her unconscious sister drink water. Student C immediately brings her friend who fell down the stairs to the clinic. Student D makes use of his clean handkerchief to tie his best friend's bleeding arm. Student E speaks comforting words to her cousin who sprained his ankle while playing basketball. Timer starts now. Time is over. The correct answers are student A, student D, and student E. I know you perfectly got all the correct answers. Well done, class. I hope that all the concepts of our lesson today remain in your mind. Remember that accidents can happen anytime and anywhere. It is necessary to be knowledgeable in giving immediate care or administering first aid to a person in need to avoid further injuries and even death. Some people are more prone to injuries, particularly those who are performing strenuous activities at home, school, workplace, and other places. Thus, anyone can give immediate care to the victim if you know the procedure and you can deal with the victim attentively to prevent further damages and save lives. It's quiz time! Now that you have learned the concepts of this lesson, let's put your knowledge to the test. Answer the following questions by choosing the letter of the correct answer. You may write your answer on the comment section below. You will be given 5 seconds to answer each question. Are you ready? Let's get started. Number 1. Ellie is suffering from a tear of a ligament in his ankle. What is his injury? A. Dislocation B. Fracture C. Sprain D. Strain Timer starts now. Time is up. The correct answer is sprain. Number two. Which among the following is not under the procedure of price? A. Compression B. Ice C. Protection D. Running Timer starts now. Time is up. The correct answer is D. Running. Number 3. Which among the following is not an objective of first aid? A. To aggravate suffering. B. To prevent further injury. C. To prolong life. D. To save lives. Timer starts now. Time is up. The answer is letter A. To aggravate suffering. Number 4. What is an immediate and temporary care given to a person who suddenly gets ill or injured? Choices are A. Alternative medicine B. Anesthesia C. First aid D. Surgery Timer starts now. Time is up. 
The answer is letter C, first A. Number five. What do you call the break in the bone that can occur from either a quick, one-time injury or from repeated stress to the bone over time? A. Dislocation B. Fracture C. Sprain D. Strain Timer starts now. Time is up. The correct answer is B. Fracture. Congratulations, class. Your great participation today made me happy. Again, Mam Ma Kat here, your PE teacher. Always remember, ignorance in basic first aid is not an excuse. Take your action and be a lifesaver. Stay healthy and keep safe, everyone. Have a nice day and see you in our next live streaming class. God bless us all.